Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, and once again, a big shout out to all the people who have supported me at pro.learncodeonline.in. Because of you, this series is available on YouTube. Thanks for supporting me. In case you want to do that, go ahead uh, there. Anyways, in this video, we are going to work with that how we can grab one single course. And I'm going to break a simple uh, kind of a good practice of the API, but I'll walk you through why I'm doing it. It's much more easier. So anyways, let's go ahead and create a simple function. And in this case, this is going to be a function. Let me scroll this a little bit up. There we go. And we're going to call this one as simply. And again, you can call this one as with a lowercase or uppercase. Depends you want to export these methods or not. I'm not planning to export any of these methods. So I'm going to say get one course. Now, this is going to be exactly the same. Uh, just like we have seen that, we will just borrow this big, humongous line up here. And we'll just inject it up here. There we go. Now, this is where I'm breaking a convention of writing good APIs. It's just a good practice. It's not a compulsion. Now, what you're going to see that sometimes uh, when you design these kinds of API, we don't call them as get one course and get all course and all of that. We just call them as courses and rest all will be called as course. And based on it is a get request or post request or a put request. We just handle that. And everything is going to be called as just course. This is a good practice, and I do follow that in production. But when you're designing these kinds of tutorial, the user should have a clear cut idea that what this method is actually going to do it. Uh, he shouldn't be just scrambling around that what is happening in this method. And that's why I usually break this convention. Uh, if you go up into a big organization, you follow a different naming convention. But I believe that if you know how to deal up with that, uh, naming is not a big issue. You can change the method name anytime. That's just a basic refactoring. Anyways, now let's go ahead and figure out that how we're going to grab a one course. So the one course, this is where we take help of this request. So whenever somebody is going to require just one course, he's going to be providing me the unique ID which is given to him. Now, if have if somebody is passing me this unique ID, the first uh, thing we have to do is grab that ID. So that's task number one. Then since I have all courses as an array, I can just go ahead and loop through that array and compare this ID to somebody if that ID is available in my array or not. And that's it. I have to just run through a loop, compare the value. If that value exists, I just have to return that. Pretty much sounds simple. Okay. So moving on, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do that is fump print. And then we're going to say get one course. This is just for our own safety to figure out that what is going on, what is happening. You can definitely go ahead and totally avoid that. We're also going to go ahead and borrow this line to set the header value. Uh, in case you want to dig up a little bit more research work or anything, you can just go ahead and do that. Now let's go ahead and first, we're going to say that I need to grab uh, ID from a request. There we go. How we're going to do that? Uh, for this, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to call this one as params because it's not just one value that I bring in. Params is a key value pair, a holder of key value pair. And we want to bring in all the data that user is sending. Probably this might evolve in the future and you want to grab more values. So we're going to take care of that. Now, in this case, we actually very first time use the mux. Yes, we can use URL. We have seen that in the video earlier that it is doable through that. But since Mux is giving us that feature, why not to use the Mux directly? It has a simple wars, uh, all the variables that are coming up in, and these variables will be automatically extracted from the request that is being passed on. So there we go. Save this one. Mux is being hopefully imported. Let's see that. There we go. I don't know why it is giving me this red squiggly line. Probably there is something wrong in my uh, import structure or something, but don't you worry, it is going to work absolutely fine. Okay, so there we go. This is the method we have. So now this params, you should definitely print it out and see how it looks like, what type of it is. I'm not going to do that. That's an exercise for you. Now, once I have this value, all I have to do is uh, let's write an action plan for this. We're going to go ahead and loop through uh, the courses. And then the second step would be uh, find a matching ID that user is sending as a parameter and return the response. Response. <laughs> there we go. OK, so sounds like a nice action plan. For looping, we are going to use the classic for range loop. So I'm not worried about the index. I'm only worried about the value. So let's call this value as course. And we are looping through a range of courses, which is our fictitious database in this case. Let's go work with that. So the first plan is all done, loop through all the courses. The second action plan is find the matching ID. Let's go ahead and work. Uh, if we want to do find a uh, comparison, so this is a conditional, obviously. So what is the condition? That this 
course, individual course, is having a lot of properties and we know that author ID, course ID. I'm looking for just one ID, which is uh, the course ID. So let's go ahead and work with that. If that matches to something, the ID which is user is passing me, which is stored inside the params, if I can find that. And since this is a key value pair, I have to mention this one that uh, this user is sending me with the name of ID. Now, how? how this is going to work. We are going to call that as ID or course ID. That kind of liberty is given to you when you define the routing of that. We haven't reached that part, so we haven't defined any route that, there. So I'll tell you how this is being governed and why do we call it as ID, not the course ID, or if you want to change it, we'll come back onto that part. Okay, so the second part is also done, find the matching ID. And what about when we find something? We want to just return the response. So let's go ahead and work with that. We've already seen that we can use this JSON library. It provides us this new encoder. And the writer is going to write through that new encoder. And we go ahead and say dot encode. What do you want to encode and want to send it through the writer? I just want to go ahead and deploy this entire course. Now it is up to you. You want to create further down a structure. Maybe you want to just send the name and everything. So from that, you can actually go ahead and use like, I want to just send an author of that or course ID. That's up to you. But this is all what we're going to do. Now once this is all done, I think that's the job of my method and I'm going to go ahead and return. But I'll also take care of the case when I don't find anything. So once the loop is all done, I haven't found anything. I'm going to go ahead and craft a JSON response here as well. So again, same stuff. We got new encoder. This is going to write something and we're going to send up a response like this. So we're, we're going to say no course found with given ID. I can also go ahead and send the response ID. I do have an access here, uh, but I'll leave that as an exercise for you. And uh, once we are done with that, don't forget to go ahead and return this. So I told you it's comparatively easy and notice it says, hey, uh, it's a redundant return statement because obviously the method is already going to get there. Uh, having this or not, totally up to you. I'm gonna just go ahead and save this one. So there we go. Now you know that how you can accept some of the data, can store that data and work based on what kind of data you have received. So that's it for this video. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.